In this tutorial, you will learn how to design hyperboloidal gears in Blender. Two identical hyperboloidal gears are capable of transmitting rotation between two shafts, mounted at an arbitrary angle between 0 and 90 degrees. The hyperboloid is essentially a surface formed by a regular cylinder, with its top and bottom twisted in the opposite directions, as follows. Likewise, a hyperboloidal gear is nothing more than a regular spurt gear, with the top and bottom twisted. Let's consider the mathematics behind the transformation of a regular spur gear pair to a meshing hyperboloidal gear pair. Two regular meshing gears with parallel shafts can conceptually be represented by two touching cylinders, called reference, or pitch cylinders. As the shaft angle becomes greater than zero, for the surfaces to continue touching, they have to become hyperboloidal through twisting. They also need to be pushed closer to each other. The twist angle and distance adjustment can be computed based on the dimensions of the original cylinders, and the desired shaft angle. Let's denote the half height of the cylinder as H, and radius as R. Let's place the first cylinder's center in the origin of the coordinate system, and the second cylinder to its right along the x-axis. Let's denote the desired shaft angle as theta. Let's denote the twist angle of the top and bottom sides of the cylinders as alpha, and the distance adjustment of the second cylinder towards the first one as d. h, r and theta, are the given values. Alpha and d, are the unknown values. Let's look at two coincident points P1 and P2 where the tops of the cylinders touch. These points are depicted here as green orbs. The original coordinates of these two points are the same by definition. Now let's look at the coordinates of P1 and P2 after the transformation. The first cylinder's top and bottom are twisted by the angle alpha. The new coordinates of P1 are as follows. The second cylinder's top and bottom are also twisted by the angle alpha. The new coordinates of P2 are as follows. Then, the second cylinder is rotated around the x-axis by the angle theta. To determine the new coordinates, we need to multiply the current coordinates by the rotation matrix. The new coordinates are as follows. We also need to adjust the x2 coordinate by the displacement variable d, to account for the shift of the second cylinder towards the first cylinder. After all these transformations, points P1 and P2 are still coincident, therefore we can say this. From these three equations, we can derive the formula for D, and two separate formulas for alpha. But with close examination, we can see that both formulas for alpha are actually identical. We can use either one. Let's test our formulas visually with the help of Blender. We will use Blender's default cylinder with a radius of 1, and depth of 2, or half height of 1. We will use the shaft angle, or theta, of 75 degrees. The formulas we just derived produce the twist angle of 50.11 degrees, and displacement of 0 0.717. Delete the default cube and add a cylinder. Press tab to enter the edit mode and delete the top and bottom faces. Select the top loop of vertices and rotate them by negative 50.11 degrees by pressing R, then minus 50.11, then enter. Select the bottom loop and rotate them by 50.11 degrees in the opposite direction. The cylinder is now a hyperboloid. Press tab to exit the edit mode. Set shading to smooth. Add the subdivision surface modifier and increase the number of view subdivisions to 3. Duplicate the hyperboloid and move it along the x-axis by 2 times the radius, by pressing Shift D, X, 2, then Enter. Rotate the second hyperboloid by 75 degrees around the x-axis by pressing R, X, 75, then Enter. Move the cylinder to the left by the calculated displacement value by pressing G, X, negative 0.717, then Enter. The hyperboloids are intermeshing nicely which proves the correctness of our formulas.
Now let's design two meshing hyperboloidal gears, and test their compatibility using Blender's rigid body physics engine. Both gears will have 20 teeth, the radius of 25 and width of 100, or half height of 50. They will be mounted at a 45 degree shaft angle. Our formulas produce the following values for alpha and D. Let's start modeling. Delete the default cube by pressing X. Go to User Preferences, and on the Adds on tab, make sure Add Mesh, Extra Objects is selected. Press 7 on the numeric pad to switch to the top view, and 5 for the orthographic mode. Select 3D cursor as the pivot point. Press Shift A, and select Mesh, Math Function, XYZ Math Surface. Open the browser and go to our Spur Gear Calculator at www.otvinta.com slash gear.html. Enter 2.5 for module, and 20 for the number of teeth. Press Calculate. Copy and paste the X and Y equations to the respective boxes in Blender. Enter 0 for the Z equation. Copy the U max value. Enter 10 for U step. Uncheck U wrap. The V parameters are not used, so enter zeros for V min and V max, and 1 for V step. Press tab to enter the edit mode. Press the remove doubles button in the tools tab. Duplicate by pressing Shift D. Invert relative to the X axis by pressing S for scale, Y, minus 1, then enter. This curve is supposed to be rotated by the tooth thickness at base angle given by the calculator. However, due to twisting, we need to use a smaller angle for proper meshing. We will use 9 degrees. This number was obtained by trial and error. Back in Blender, rotate around the Z axis by 9 degrees by pressing R, Z, 9. Then enter. Select these two vertices and create a tooth tip by pressing F. Select everything, duplicate and rotate by 18 degrees by pressing Shift D, R, Z, 18, then enter. 18 is 360 divided by the number of teeth. Select these vertices. Press Shift S and select cursor to select it. Unselect the top vertex. Press the spin button. Enter 16 for the number of vertices and 180 for angle. Select everything and press remove doubles. Press Shift C to return the 3D cursor to the origin. Duplicate and rotate by 18 degrees by pressing Shift D, R, Z, 18, then enter. Press Ctrl R to repeat the previous operation until you have a full circle. Select everything and press remove doubles. Extrude upwards by 100 by pressing E, Z, 100, then enter. Twist by the calculated angle of 55.93 degrees by pressing R, Z, minus 55.93, then enter. Select the bottom loop of vertices and rotate them in the opposite direction by the same angle. At the top of the window, note the number of selected vertices. There are 740 in our case. Add a circle with 740 vertices and the radius of 10. Select the bottom loop, press W and select Bridge Edge Loops. Select the circle and extrude it upwards by 100. Bridge it with the upper loop of vertices. Select everything and press Ctrl-N, to fix the normals. To help with rigid body physics simulation, create 50 loop cuts by pressing Ctrl-R, 50, and right and then left mouse button. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. Move the gear down by half its height by pressing G, Z. Minus 50, then enter. Our gear is ready. Call it gear 1. 
Open the Physics tab on the right. Press Rigid Body. Select Mesh for Shape and Zero for Margin. Add a cylinder and move it up. Press Rigid Body. Select Passive for Type. Add an empty and move it up. Press Rigid Body Constraint. Select Hinge for Type. Select Gear 1 for Object 1 and Cylinder for Object 2. Add an empty. Rotate it by 90 degrees around the Y axis. Move it down. Press Rigid Body Constraint. Select Motor for Type. Select Gear 1 as Object 1 and Cylinder as Object 2. Enable Angular Motor. Now select the gear, cylinder and hinge empty together. Duplicate and move along the x-axis by 2 times the radius, by pressing Shift D, X, 50, then Enter. Rotate by the shaft angle around the x-axis by pressing R, X, 45, then Enter. Shift towards the first gear by the calculated displacement distance by pressing G, X, negative 22, then Enter. If necessary, rotate the first gear around the Z-axis until there is no visible overlap between the two gears' teeth. Press the play button. If the simulation does not run smoothly, add geometry to both gears by entering the edit mode, selecting everything, pressing W and selecting subdivide. And that concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching.